Hello, and just thank you for allowing us to interview you today, and mm -hmm. I appreciate all the guidance that you will provide. So just quickly, just share a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I'm John Gardner. I'm the founding executive director of the National Resource Center for the first year experience in students in transition at the University of South Carolina. I'm also a president of the John N. Gardner Institute for Excellence in Undergraduate Education. And I'm Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Library and Information Science at the University of South Carolina. My work uh, for over four decades has been improving the first year uh, college experience for especially American college students to increase their success as learners and uh, their preparation to become uh, successful and contribute our citizens, try to increase first and second year retention rates and graduation rates. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions that we do have as you envision the first year experience um, is what would be the three primary student learning outcomes of a UNIV uh, course? Well, you have um, done what many people do. They ask an educator what sounds like a simple question, um, but is really uh, much more complex than that. Because you're asking me about a course type, a so-called first-year seminar, that has been in the American college curriculum since 1882. Not 1982, but 1882. Uh, there are all types of first-year seminars. Uh, and it really comes down to what are your uh, objectives as an institution. Why are you offering at your institution this course? And who are your students? And what do they need? I think the most fundamental question is what, what do your students need if you provided a certain type of and range of educational experiences? Would your students be more likely to be more successful, however you define success at your institution? And uh, because institutions have different types of students in terms of preparation, demographic characteristics, wealth, all of that, um, what students need varies. Now, you could also argue that all students need some things in common. All of them need certain types of support. They need friendship. Um, they need bonding and affinity with other students. They need to develop a sense of purpose. They need to uh, develop um, uh, locus of control, they need to develop motivation, no matter you know what the type of institution is. But uh, there are five basic types of first year seminars. Uh, the person who defined this research model is my wife, Dr. Betsy Barefoot. This is a typology that's been used extensively in this country since the late 1980s. The first type of first year seminar is a, uh, a seminar that basically provides social adaptation, social adjustment. Uh, acclim acclimatization, uh, acculturation, assimilation to a college campus. Those courses tend to not be very academic. They tend to maybe have one credit, sometimes two credits, but they're not nearly as academic. The second type of seminar is an academic seminar that would have common content across all the sections so that all the instructors of the first year seminar would have a consensus about the goals of the course and the course content. And there would be some orientation activities, as in the first type, but the course is not only an orientation course to the campus, but it's a, a course in uh, how to acquire the knowledge and the behavior and the skills of someone who's successful in college, all right? The third type of first year seminar is a, uh, where you, uh, it's only taught by faculty and it takes a particular topic in a discipline. It could be any discipline, that the, it's the faculty member's discipline and you provide to students an intellectual experience in depth where you study something in great depth so you show beginning college students how in, the, in higher education we pursue certain topics in depth as opposed to doing it very superficially like you do in survey introductory college courses. Um, and those uh, versions of first year seminars tend to be topical in nature. You know, you pick a topic from your, you know, my graduate preparation was in the, the American colonial history. And I would do a first year seminar on the, the, um, the legislation of the British Parliament for over 150 years that regulated the commerce of the British colonies. And I, I would study this to sh have students study this to show how uh, government legislation drives behaviors. Okay, and determines what people do or don't do. And they need to understand that to be citizens today in the United States. All right. Okay, the fourth type of uh, seminar is an introduction to a professional major, business, agriculture, education, criminal justice, pharmacy, um, 
uh, pre-med, a range of professional business, but range of professional disciplines. So it's a course that introduces students to how you write in this discipline, how you use libraries, communication skills, what do you do in the job market with this discipline. It's an introduction to the discipline. The fifth type of first year seminar is basically a study skills course. Uh, it's, it's just emphasizing the study skills strategies, how to read textbooks, how to take lecture notes, how to practice active listening, uh, how to prepare for exams, the differences between different types of exams, uh, etc. So when you ask me what are the three most important things, then I have to say, well, what type of first year seminar are you offering? What are you, what are you trying to do with your students? Um, I think for me, I guess, it, Maybe hard for me to pick three, um, but overall, all of these courses are trying to make students more successful in college. They're trying to teach uh, students uh, how is it in higher education that we go about asking questions, collecting evidence, arriving at conclusions, thinking through complex problems. How do we reason? How do we communicate? How do we write? How do we collect information? How do we become information literate? Okay, um, so the, the overriding goal is to make students more successful academically. Now you might measure that, say, by the acquisition of writing skills, speaking skills, numeracy skills, critical thinking skills. There are any number of ways you can measure that. Um, another overriding goal of these courses is for students to acclimate socially, to feel more comfortable and at home on a college campus. Uh, particularly for first-generation students who have no experience with our, and whose parents didn't have any higher education experience. And we know that until students um, develop a certain degree of social, personal, emotional comfort and a feeling that they belong on a college campus, they're not going to function as well. So a goal for me would be to not only be teaching these uh, academic skills, but also the, the social acclimation skills that you, you want to have students experience uh, so that they develop a sense of commitment to, to be comfortable at your university, even though you may occasionally be asking them to do things that are very challenging, stressful, and may discomfort them, but they still are feeling like they belong there. You've made a, a, a welcome, you create a welcoming environment for them. Um, I guess beyond that, I would hope these courses would help <clears throat> develop in students a sense of purpose for why they're in college now at this institution and what can this institution do for me now that I'm willing to undertake. So it's, it's a meshing of individual purpose with institutional purpose. So those are a big three for me. Um, I'm not arguing that they're right or best, but those are three that would be important for me. But what matters at your institution and what are your goals, what do your students need, who are your students, not who you would rather they be, but who are they actually? And what do they need to be successful? What have you learned from them that they need to be successful? What are you telling you about what they need to be successful? That's what you need to be addressing in this course. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.